Hello and welcome to another Ask Me Anything session with CX. My name is Ash and I'm the Community Manager here at Elementor. And the topic of today's discussion is Flexbox containers. And I am lucky enough to be joined by two experts on this matter. So welcome, Igor and Richard. Hey. Hey, everyone. It's, uh, Hello. <laughs> it's uh, great to have you here today, guys. Do you want to just quickly tell us a little bit about yourselves? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, um, my name is Richard. Uh, I've been uh, working with Elementor since it came out pretty much 2016. Uh, I've been with the company since last year in March. I was in the tier two uh, technical support uh, team. So I probably helped a lot of you in, in the community. And uh, yeah, and now I've switched my role to the uh, uh, community customer relation, you know, uh, department and I hope to help you and support you in the future as well. <laughs> Thank you. Good to have you on board, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Igor. Hello, everyone. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Igor. Uh, I've been uh, a customer experience public relations specialist for a couple of months now and uh, now uh, joining um, Richard joined the, the team as well. So both of us will be um, a part of this team and uh, we'll be there for you on the community, social media, as well as uh, um, posting some new content like this. So hopefully you like it. It's great to have you here as well, Igor. Thank you for joining. So we have been collecting questions all week about Flexbox containers and Richard and Igor will be answering them all very soon, but we will also have plenty of other time to answer more questions. So if you have any burning questions about containers, please add them to the chat, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching. And Nicholas, hi, Nicholas. We'll be sure to either answer your questions there and then, or he'll send them to me so that we can provide a demonstration as well. So with that out of the way, shall we get started? Okay, so our first question is from Jasmine. And Jasmine asks, in which cases should I use grid or Flexbox containers? Who's going to take this one? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and take that one. Okay. A great question. Um, so yeah, um, can everyone see my screen here? No, if you want to just share your oh, screen course, with yeah, us, yeah. Richard, yeah, and then yeah. I'll yeah. I'll throw it up for us That's all. That's what it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've no doubt you could give an excellent verbal, you know, description. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's so, have a look. I think visual might be better as well. <laughs> Okay, we can see your screen fine now. Okay, great. So here we have, uh, you know, an empty uh, page that I, I got prepared for today. Um, so there's actually two ways, of course, to add a new container, either through the plus sign. And here we, of course, can either use, we can pick uh, Flexbox or Grid. Or um, we, of course, can add a new container here from, from the elements. So... Um, it's actually we something we have to decide before we add these. I mean, of course, we can go back and you know change it. Uh, so if we use the grid, you'll see that we can pick from different layouts here. So I'm just going to pick the one with the uh, six boxes. And what it does here when we add a new uh, element, it'll always take the next one available. So I can't put it here. So if I put it here, it's still going to go to the next, the next uh, container. So basically, it'll always take the next available container. And when we use the uh, the regular flexbox container, you know, you pick your direction. I'll pick the same amount of uh, containers here, six. And when we add the elements here, you know, we can drag and drop the widgets into the same container that we would like to, for example, like this. So yeah, that's basically, it's it's a matter of, you know, deciding or, you know, depending on what can, kind of uh, layout we want to have. And then just going from there. Hope that helps. <laughs> Great, thank you, Richard, for that, for that explanation. And um, there will be much more content coming up in the in the coming months with uh, with grid it's obviously still a relatively new 
feature in Elemental um, and we'll be sure to, to provide lots more educational material around that so you can make the right decision on, on when and where to use it. All right, moving on. So our second question is from Rajat and Rajat asks, there's a little bit of backstory here as well before we get to the question. So pay attention, whoever's answering this one. Um, so he says, I'm in need of help on how to display nested tabs at the top of mobile. I've activated the nested elements and Flexbox container in Elementor of 3.14. I've created a nested tab with the tab buttons at the top. While this is displaying perfectly in a row in desktop and tablet portrait modes, in mobile portrait mode, the tab buttons are displaying in a column, one below the other. How can I display the nested tabs at the top in portrait mode? I hope that made sense. If you'd like me to read it again, please let me know. Yes, makes sense. So uh, let me re reiterate what the question was. And uh, here we go. So here we are on a test website. Just a second, Igor, if you could just share your screen for us. Oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> has, it, has it been a long day at CX? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Give me just a second. So there we go. Oh, I can share the whole window. There we go. So hopefully you okay. can see it now. Okay, I've got it now. Let me just throw this up. Okay, yeah. ready when you are, Igor. Okay, so you can see here that we have a test website. This is just a, a normal page. One thing to note uh, to enable containers, of course, uh, just to mention, of course, you need to go to Elementor settings if you ha already haven't. And then under features here, you have Flexbox container. You also have some other features, what I do usually because even these uh, are called ongoing experiments. They're pretty much stable for live websites and I do activate all of them unless, uh, you know, I don't really need some of them and then I can, I can go ahead and deactivate uh, uh, the ones that I don't really need. Okay, uh, with that out of the way, uh, here I am in the editor, and uh, I believe the question is if you add nested, was it nested tabs? Uh, and we add it here. We yes, can, nested tabs. Right, we can uh, see that we can add images. So let's add something to the next one. So let's say the heading, okay, and then something on the third tab. Okay, so uh, on desktop, and on tablet, uh, of course, I can have these uh, uh, sorted horizontally. Uh, and also um, here, just a second, I can set if I want, oh, sorry, uh, for the containers, I can go here and set, you know, if I want them on the left side, center, right, right. And uh, I can set if I want them at the bottom, um, all the way to the left, all the way to the right. However, uh, you will notice that on desktop and tablet, uh, they are spread horizontally. However, on mobile, you will see indeed that they are vertically. This is in order um, to uh, save space, let's say, because a lot of times what's going to happen, you're not going to have enough space for all the tabs and it's automatically sorted uh, uh, vertically. At the moment, <laughs> at the moment, there is no really easy way to do this without uh, some custom code. So uh, if I go ahead and publish this, um, we can only have it like this. There might be a workaround um, with uh, having these, uh, uh, you know, just go, just use uh, less space, having one tab each, but they will open only in one third of the screen. So what I want, however, that's not the solution that this user was, was asking for. So instead of that, again, a custom code would be the best. Uh, at the moment, unfortunately, I don't have that custom code with me. I will send it uh, in the comments of this video so you can use it. Uh, basically, you need to add it under advanced and then custom CSS. Uh, we are, this is a, a common question in recent times, so we are definitely working on uh, implementing uh, this option in the future, hopefully. Uh, so we have these tabs um, match horizontal because this is uh, this question has been asked many times, and every time we would give a, 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 um, a custom code for this. However, if, now with the AI, you could try and ask it to do this for you. 
I'm not sure if <laughs> if it's going to be the best uh, best solution, but uh, um, yes. Um, Richard, do you have maybe maybe? Uh, yes, I think we just added this in the the newest update. If I'm not mistaken, um, can you please go to the tabs and then go to the oh, right away, mm -hmm. and then go to the additional settings right below that. Oh, okay, so you can set not. Yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. Yes, this was the latest, <laughs> the latest change log. So yes, yes, this is one of the questions that was really requested a lot. So now right. the breakpoints, if you set none here, uh, right. you, will, you will actually have them all here. Now, why are they uh, in two rows? Uh, this is exactly the point. Uh, we, uh, the space for them is not enough to fit in one row. So what you can do to, uh, you know, fix this is you can go and set, let's go here to the tabs and gap between elements, distance, okay. So let's maybe set, let's set the content. Okay, so you can see if there is less content here, if the gap is smaller, they can all fit in one column. So yeah, thank you, Richard, for that. I actually yes. didn't see that in the Like I log. said, it just came out in the latest uh, update that we did because it was a, uh, a request a lot of our users had. Absolutely. So yeah. Yeah. so yeah, that's it. You actually don't need custom code. So forget what I said in the beginning. <laughs> Let's go for the next question. <laughs> great, um, great teamwork there, guys. I'm glad that we uh, came up with a definitive answer. I was really pleased personally to see that update in the in the latest release because we did see a lot of questions about it in the community. Um, people didn't want to switch to that accordion style on mobile, so it's good to provide all of the options for everybody. Okay, so moving on, let's get the next question up. So the next question is from Sandra and Sandra asks, what does the align content do on wrap? It is not working for me. Who wants to take this one? Mm, I'll take that one. Okay. Let's see, I'll just share your screen now, Richard. Oh, yes. There we go. We're, we're having. <laughs> oh, no, it was it was there. Sorry, I said I, I'll share your screen. Oh. I already had it. Oh, so okay. If you, could, if you yeah. could now reshare your screen. Yeah. Right. There we we are. are technical geniuses, honest. We are, everybody. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, for this question, we'll probably have to add a new container here, obviously. And then um, this the setting there that Sandra mentions is this one right here, wrap. And you have, can have no wrap and and then wrap. And this is the this is what this is the question is pertaining to. Um, and for this, we would need to add uh, several ele elements into the container. Um, probably, you know, two or three or more here. Um, it's probably not this one. It's not showing anything. Let's see. So, let's see what else do we have. And maybe here, I don't know, it's out of form, I guess, huh? Okay. Well, first of all, we would have to change the direction to go this way. So now we see with the wrap on that if it's, you know, these elements are too wide, it's going to go into the next well, next row. Um, and of course, you can change that, you know, for different viewpoints. Ports. Um, and if I change this right here, nothing is happening. So, you know, that's probably what she was meaning. Um, and the reason it's not working is because the we don't have a minimum height here. So we could change this so that the container is higher, you know, has a bigger height. And now we see that this will work. So you see the elements moving here inside the container, depending on, you know, what you like to have. So yeah, this this align content with the wrap only works if we have if we've given the uh, the the container a certain height, instead of its default height, which will only be as high as as needed. So I hope that 
answers the question, I think. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Richard. Okay. So moving on, our next question is from Tom. And Tom asks, how do I make containers only half width on mobile and change the order of the elements? So two mm. elements um, to this. I can take this one. Uh, actually, okay. I believe the same or very similar question was posted uh, in our weekly uh, common questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Post we do every Friday, so you can follow that as well. Um, it's on the uh, community page of Elementor on Facebook. So let me go ahead and, and uh, show that. So I'm back here in the editor. And uh, so the first thing, again, it's with mobile. Okay. So let's uh, actually add here uh, a flexbox with, uh, a, we can see here two inner flexbox containers. Uh, we can even change the content width to be full width. And let's add some elements, some widgets. Okay, so let's maybe add an image here, and let's maybe add a video here. So this is a uh, this is a nice representation. And again, if we go to tablet, um, pretty nicely again into uh, inner containers. And then here on mobile, we can see it goes back uh, to for these containers to be uh, placed vertically instead of horizontally. So uh, again, the question is: Okay, so I want uh, two uh, inner containers to be side by side here. I don't want them to be, um, you know, placed on, on one underneath another. So for this one, uh, you would go to, so it can be, so in this um, example, I added, as you can see, uh, containers, but they don't actually need to be even containers. Let me actually uh, show you that. So I'm actually going to take this image out of this container and just place it here inside the parent container. So I don't need this empty container anymore. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so now on mobile, it looks like this. So how do we have these side by side? So to have them side by side, you would have to change the width, of course. So the one problem is people try changing the width here. Okay, it says width. However, this is the width of the image, but inside uh, the whole width of uh, the screen. So how do I change that here? So you would have to go to advanced and here under uh, where it says width, you would change it to custom. And now you can change the percentages uh, to let's say maybe 43%. And uh, for this one, because it's inside the container, I would go to this inner container and change this content width to full width, change it to percentages, and now just change this to let's say 57. So now we have this side by side and in a one column. Uh, actually, two columns, sorry. So that's it. Hopefully, this satisfies uh, the answer. And then, oh, yeah, the, we have another uh, sub question, right? How to order them? Change the order. Them? Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. Okay. Sorry, let me share again. Yeah, so let me read the whole question again, just so that it's clear. So, how do I make containers only half width on mobile, which you've obviously demonstrated already? and change the order of the elements. OK, so a lot of people want the order change on, on different uh, you know, uh, sizes. So you know, maybe for tablet, maybe for mobile. So let's say for tablet, let's actually, to demonstrate this better, let's add another element. So I'm going to add a, a heading as well here. OK, so we have three elements now. And on mobile, it looks like this. OK, so let's say on desktop, this is fine. On tablet, I want maybe on tablet for the text to go on, uh, after the image. So to change that, uh, so this that's a kind of a custom order. So it's not a, a really a reversed order. So if you want a, a completely reversed order, you would go to uh, the container, the parent container, go advanced again. And here where it says order, you can, uh, you can order them sorry by end actually you go here and you go advanced and you go okay end. so this one will go to the end however if you want a custom order you go to the element go this custom order uh, select the number so you're adding number one so it would be the first one it's not currently the first one because all the other elements now need their own number but actually this one will be the second one image we want to be the first one so again we go advanced order custom order number two okay 
or one, this one, okay. And then the video, actually, we cannot do it with the video because video is inside the inner container. So we actually need to do it for the inner container, okay. So inner container, okay, advanced versus order custom. And then we can select number three. So we set it for tablet. So now we have this on a desktop, this order, this order on tablet. And let's say we want a completely different order on uh, mobile. And uh, you might have noticed something now. Uh, mobile order has changed. Why is that? Uh, that is because uh, the way that Elementor is set up, because the, everything that you set up on, on desktop that you don't have set up on tablet, tablet will inherit, okay? Uh, as well for, as for mobile. So everything you set for tablet, uh, mobile will inherit. So uh, mobile just inherited the custom order for tablet. Okay, so now if you want a custom order for mobile, you'll have to uh, change it once again. So let's go for the heading. Let's say we want it in the third place here. So we will change, you will see here it's number two, but it looks like it's grayed out. That is because this is inherited from tablet. So I'm gonna change it to number three as custom order image. I'm gonna change to, let's say number two. And then the video, actually the container that contains the video, I'm gonna change the custom order to number one. And that's it. Hopefully this helped. Great explanation. Thank you very much, Igor. Okay, so hopefully that's answered our, our pre-questions that we collected this week. Um, I've got a few now that I've been collecting in the in the comments on uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. So um let's go with this one first you just need to fight amongst yourselves who's going to answer so for this one we're actually going to go back to the grid um and Ibondis has asks can we have many elements on a grid box i believe that's supposed to be in a grid box and i think this is a great uh, demonstration of this is certainly what i would suggest using a flex box within a grid um but what do you think guys you're the experts today so can we have many elements in a grid box? Um, maybe I can take this one. Sure. So uh, I'm gonna sh if you can share my screen. Yeah, you're live. So I believe the question is, so I, if I have a grid box here and let's say I want the grid to, let's say, look like this, okay? And just for the space sake, I'm gonna say I want it full width, there we go. And I want more elements here. I don't just want to add an image, that's it. I want more elements. So to add more elements, it's very simple. You would just add a container, okay? So now inside this container, you can go ahead and add, you know, as many elements as you would like. So let's say, you see a heading and a widget and, you know, uh, different, uh, different widgets. And you, of course, you can do everything that you can do with the flex box. You can, you know, change the, uh, direction, uh, the content uh, justification, and also alignment, and so on. So that's basically, it. and then we can go ahead and, you know, let's say copy this and paste it here. Okay. And, uh, you know, we have uh, four of these now. So I believe that would, that this answer would satisfy, hopefully. Yeah, no, it's, great. it's a great explanation. And yeah, I think combining Flexbox and Grid is, is super powerful. And I'm, I'm sure that users will be able to create all types of, of layouts and uh, uh, with one, these. One thing uh, just to maybe mention again, uh, if you can show my screen, uh, you can always, so let's say you, you build something and then you say, oh, you know what, I should have used Flexbox. No worries. You can see here where it says container layout. You can always change back to Flexbox or to Grid at any point uh, in your in your design. So right. it's, it's not all over. If if you start with the wrong um, option at the beginning, it's really easy to change it back and then you know uh, continue from there. Yes, I forgot to mention this, and I think that was the first question that you can always go back depending you know what kind of layout you need. And you can do this uh, if you see my screen. So I just uh, uh, gone to this flex box inside the grid and change it to grid. So we have we can even have a, a grid inside the grid per se. Yeah, endless possibilities. <laughs> yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Okay, great. Okay, our next question uh, is from Simon Clay, and he asks: container, container width, full width slash boxed is very confusing. Please explain why it's needed. 
I think in that uh, in the the reply with the uh, the question we had with the um, mobile, the fifty fifty, you know, to have them next to each other, that would not work in the boxed version. It only works in the full width. Um, is that, uh, yeah, because we try. I mean, right, Igor? That's what we. I'm. I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe you're. you're uh, I can't yeah. remember that right now. But what I what I can say that. Uh, um, it is for some. Uh, I have noticed that some people um, are a bit confused with, you know, why do I always have to select full width? And uh, I would say, you know, maybe in the future we can we can maybe modify that. But for now, um, let me show uh, you an example now. So um, a lot of people, let's say they start they start here with the flex box, okay, and then have two side by side, and uh, if they add an inner inner container here okay we have two inner containers uh, you can see that these inner containers are uh, uh, automatically set to full width and they need to be uh, because if you okay this one this one this is interesting so the new one that I added is set to boxed so uh, the boxed layout will add the padding on on the will have actually its own width the maximum width so it will have like margins on sides and this will depend of course uh, on your default width of the that you set in the global settings the default is usually 1140 so what i would suggest is always always using a full, full width for all the inner containers uh, so you don't have any issues with your design. Uh, again, um, it makes a lot of sense for your design for the parent container, for the first container, where you can select if you want boxed layout or full width layout. But for the inner containers, it only makes sense for them to be a full width. I don't see, um, you know, when you would use a boxed for the inner container, okay? Uh, because you can do everything for the with the full, because you basically just change here the, the percentages and that's it. Right. So, so uh, it it could be. I understand the confusion, but uh, just uh, do it this way, and you won't have any issues. <laughs> okay, it. great, thank you. I think just experimenting with all these different settings is key. You know, spending some time learning what they can all achieve, and then deciding what's right for your project is is a great step to take. Um, okay, let's have a look at my list of questions here. I'm going to bring one up here. So Fabio, hi guys, a question. What are at, not too sure, try this very moment, all the features from containers ahead. Uh, are they, okay, so I think uh, what Fabio is asking here is are containers safe to use in a production environment? Currently, it's a uh, release kind of candidate, so it should be coming out in the uh, next next uh, major update, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, I heard yeah. as well. Well, it, it's if not next, then the, the next after it. It's <laughs> it's uh, it's very soon to be ready. I mean, there is really not much to um, you know to fix there. It's basically what's left is, you know, compatibility, let's say, with other third party add ons and, and plugins. True. Um, but uh, we, we are not really getting any, um, you know, tickets, a lot of tickets regarding that as well in the recent times. So what I would say is be prepared <laughs> to use containers because they are coming uh, as a, an, an already uh, turn on option uh, in the future. So definitely build uh, build with containers, use containers for your production websites. They are completely safe to use. You won't ha have any any issues. And if you do, Richard and I are here as well as all the support from Elementor. Exactly. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I'm just checking the questions again, guys. And I think we've actually run out of questions. For the mm. time being, which is a shame because we're on a roll here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have we've yeah. answered all our pre questions that came in before the show and the ones that have come in the live comments. Um, we had a question actually, um, and Ash, uh, I remember you creating this video back when we used sections and and uh, uh, columns. Uh, where people want to use horizontal scrolling on their website. They mm. don't want the website to scroll vertically, but horizontally. And I was playing around before uh, um, this uh, um, 
in this meeting and actually wanted to show a little bit of that. However, I'm not there yet. So yeah, at the moment, it's still a custom code uh, thing. Um, again, some another feature that uh, a lot of users ask. So definitely a feature request. Uh, so if we don't make it, we're going to create uh, some custom code for you and uh, send you so you can you can use it. I, that video, uh, that video, uh, Rich, uh, sorry, uh, Ash, that video needs to be updated. I read some comments from you from that video that you posted about a year ago now. It uh, does, so yeah. It, I think it was longer than that. I think it was longer than a year ago, but it was a very fun tutorial to make. And then obviously oh, Flexbox containers came along. And, uh, and yeah, we knew that we would have to remake it one day. Um, so we will certainly add it to the schedule. And perhaps you guys can, can assist with that. Um, because yeah, a horizontal scrolling website is a, is a very popular uh, request. So something that a lot of users would like to be able to do. Okay, I have had one more question come in from Nicholas. I'm just going to process it now. Um, I'm not sure who's asked this question. It's come from Facebook or YouTube. Uh, but the question is, guys, how can I have a container set with custom units and the section HTML tag? When I D and D it, I'm not too sure what the D and D part means. Am I being, let me just get clarification. That Dungeons that. and Dragons? No. Yeah, that's, that's the first <laughs> thing that popped into my head. <laughs> not that I play it, but um, I'll just wait for, wait for confirmation to come through for that one. Are uh, they dragon, maybe... dragon, dragon drop. There we go. I feel, oh, a, little bit course, yeah. I feel a little bit stupid now, seeing as I work at Elemental. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, Ash, if you could maybe share my screen, uh, of for course. A second. There you go, Richard. It's all so, yours. Uh, yeah, I believe, uh, they mean this HTML tag, if I'm not mistaken correctly, um, which is here in the, you know, in the layout oh, part. I believe so, yes. Options. You can, you know, this is also, uh, a new option that we've added to the, uh, containers you can add any kind of you know html tag you can even add a link so that the whole container is linked to some external or internal link um and what was it with the drag and drop i don't um combination with this i'll read the question again I i'm not fully understanding it entirely um, but how can i how can i have a container set with custom units and the section HTML tag when I drag and drop it. I, oh, okay, sorry. So I, I just completely realized what this means. So I believe the user is asking that when they drag a new container into the Elementor editor, how can those settings be preset? So I'm guessing we're thinking oh. about something like save as default here. Um, save as default. Yeah. I love that I think... one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Does that make sense? Richard, you want to show? Yeah, go now. Go ahead, Igor. You can take from there. <laughs> Let okay. Me Let me change your screens. There we go. Igor, so, you're ready. So this is an option, again, quite new in the past few updates. Uh, so I can tell you that this is a rarely used option, unfortunately. A lot of people forget this option even exists. Uh, as well as I, I notice people even who use Elementor for years, you know, don't know about Command or Control E, which pops up the finder. So now we also have a finder here. Uh, again, very useful, you know, uh, but uh, let's go back to the original question. So the original question was, uh, how do I, um, you know, set uh, widgets to be a certain way and for them to always be, let's say, a certain way uh, every time I, I drop them in. So this new feature is called a save as default. So I'm going to have here a container. And let's say, uh, I believe we can do the same with the with the containers as well, yes. So you can see here, save as default. So let's say a lot of users say, okay, every time I put a new container, I need to change the width. So let's say you use the, the box settings and you want only for this page, uh, most of the containers to be a width of a thousand pixels. And then you want uh, the default container to have a horizontal direction. And then you want the content by default to be spaced around and you want them to be centered and you don't, and you want the gap to be 10 and uh, you want let's say to be wrapped and you know you want the background to be different color and let's say you want it this way every time and, and let's say let's add let's add a few more things let's add margins let's say you want 
10 pixel margins, 15 pixel padding, and you want this for every single container you add. And now if you right click on the container and say save as default, okay, so it's going to warn you here that it's going to be for all the containers. Okay, so let's say yes. And now if I go ahead and add a new one, oh, sorry, I've just added a grid. <laughs> uh, I, th I think maybe if you drop from the, oh, sorry, sorry, from the, from the, the side, yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh. So every time I would drop the new one, it will be completely the same. Every single setting will be the same. So it's a default now state. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, but you can do this not with only containers, you can do this with any widget. And this is an amazing thing. So let's say you want, you know, the the width of every new vid new image to be this, you know, maybe you want uh, to add some border radius to every image you add. So let's say 50 pixels. But you want images to be like this. Again, right click, save as default, and now every time, so this is different. A lot of people are confusing this with the global widgets. We do still have the save as global option, but this is different. This is every time you add a new image, it will look like that, okay? So that's the difference. It's uh, because for the global ones, as you know, you have to go add element, go to globals, and then from here, uh, pull them, okay? So it's a, it's a different way uh, of doing things. Um, and uh, for example, where I use it is here for headings. So every time you add a heading, you have this text. And for me, this is a bit boring text. Add your heading text here. So uh, I just want to maybe make it, hey, I'm new, <laughs> let's say, <laughs> you know, and then I can save it as, um, as default. And then again, whenever I use it again, and this is, uh, this is for any page so i can go to a new page and you know new template wherever uh, these will be the same i just want to mention one thing that uh, not a lot of people know a new feature that you added as well uh, and that is now you don't have to drag and drop now you can only click and this is uh, very good for accessibility as well so you know people with problems with dexterity you know uh especially if you're let's say using a, a small touchpad and things like that uh, if you just click so first thing you need to do is uh, uh, select where you want to add the next element so if it's the container or an inner container or uh, just on the page you should select first that so i'm gonna let's let's say let's duplicate these two containers okay and let's select the first container and now if i go to add an element or a widget uh, I just need to click on it and it will be added as the last item. So again, if I go to the first container and I go plus and let's say I want to add a button and the, I just click on it and the button is there. So I can do the same on the second container. I just click on the container or here or here and then go plus and let's say I want to add a Google map and it will add inside that container. So it's a pretty cool uh, feature where you don't need to drag and drop anymore right. uh, for the most part. Uh, Igor, can you also show real quick, if you don't want it to have a default setting, that you can do that real quick with a right click as well, I believe? Uh, right. Uh, can you, uh, you... If you don't want to have it as a default. If I don't want to have it as a default, what? Yeah. Sorry. So I didn't maybe. So you can. So what you can do is right click yeah. and click reset style. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So right click <laughs> reset style. Yeah. Will will reset the style. However, as you can see here, it will not reset the the, the content here. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So the content will stay, but the style, meaning the style tab, will yes. be reset. Right. So yeah, you can go back like that. Um, yeah. That's, and, if, uh, and like you uh, 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 like you did before, you can if you don't want a container with no styling, you can just have to add it here in the uh, page. Uh, right, right. If you do, yeah. if you if you already have it like this, and then you want with no styling, you can right. do this way. Uh, yeah. We we did so. Let's say this way, and then right. it won't it won't have any styling. Perfect. Uh, default. Yeah. yeah, that's it. One of the um, one of the best features to be added for live productivity is that save as default. It saves such a huge amount of time, um, not just from a styling aspect, but being able to add content as well. If you build sites for clients and you don't want to show, you know, a little piece of Lauren Ipsum text and you want to write something a little bit more useful, 
I did a demonstration when this first came out and showed some use cases of, you know, providing instructions for, for clients, you know, of how to use that widget. And it's built right in there, saved as default. Absolutely fantastic. Um, it's a really, really good addition. Okay, I got a couple more questions. Just a quick follow-up question from uh, from Fabio, who, who asked earlier whether containers were safe to use on websites. Um, same question, but about grid. So obviously it's not as established as Flexbox right now. Um, do you guys want to just elaborate a little bit on on kind of where we're at with grid and Richard, maybe? Yeah, go ahead, Igor. I'm, I'm, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, uh, I let me let me go ahead and first of all uh, show the road. Give me a second. So, uh, you know, whenever in doubt, you can go ahead and check our roadmap. Uh, we have it's uh, elementor.com forward slash roadmap, and you can see what's in progress. You can see what we are planning, okay, and what's recently released. And uh, uh, here you can see one thing that's uh, very popular um, among other, um, you know, page builders and site builders uh, is a CSS selector. So this will be huge because people who who like this freedom of creating their own CSS and um, attaching it to certain elements, they will have this freedom. And this will be a global CSS that you can, uh, you know, attach to. Um, you can create it once and, you know, uh, have it uh, for multiple different uh, widgets uh, uh, inside element or, you know, containers and so on. So this is, a, 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 I would say, a big update. Um, and the question was more about the grid so let's see at the moment so if you go to grid we had some questions uh, asking okay so what if i want a grid but i want let's say the first one to be shorter and the second one to be longer or the one to have uh, so this is something that uh, is coming as well i believe but uh, not in this update uh, what you could do is you can change here you can see here that the items inside the grid um, we can see, it. So, okay, so the outline is shown, uh, but you can change here, you see it's, it's uh, selected in fractions. So two, you can say three, four, okay. So this is like a table, but you can go ahead and add custom uh, way, uh, you know, with, with CSS, how you would like to, to have this. So, you know, I'm not sure now, I think we can do this, do it like maybe with percentages and then, and then, uh, say 30 am i putting the right okay 30 percent not sure if i'm doing this uh, uh correct now uh, but um yeah anyway you could you can do it with the uh, you know, different values with percentages, pixels, and and however you want. So that's one one cool thing. Again, not uh, maybe Richard. Do you have an example for us there? So also, um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> no. So yeah. So uh, also the gap between uh, these you can change. This is uh, um, again one of the options that you know. It can be in pixels. You can change it again to percentages, even custom, and so on. So it's uh, it's at the moment I would say uh, you know it's very useful, uh, but uh, people want more from Grid. So I believe we'll have more in the future for that. Yeah, there's definitely more to come when it comes to CSS Grid. That's for sure. So so one to look out for, which is uh, which is incredibly exciting. Um, okay, we've got a question here. Unfortunately, there's no name showing for this just because Facebook are a little bit more restricted with this type of thing. So I apologize to whoever asked this question. Um, but we have already covered this. I just wanted to show it just to go over it again. Um, but for this user, please rewatch this video because Igor did demonstrate. Um, but I will read the question out anyway. So Igor, greetings from Miami. Has Elementor thought of allowing a widget to be saved as default and additionally giving it a name? Obviously, we didn't cover the whole name part. Um, this way, I could add several uh defaults of the same widget um so it is an elaboration on on what we showed um 
so at the moment to give it a name, I believe you can only do it with like global widgets. You can't really name the default ones. There is uh, only um, the way, you know, so you save it as, as default and that's next time you add the same widget is going to be the same, this look the same way. It makes a great, great. A great feature request though. We should definitely yeah. consider. Yeah, it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Jump on that roadmap and- It's, uh, it's, and somewhere, bet it's somewhere between the global widgets and the deep, and save as default. <laughs> it's really yeah. like uh, in the Netherlands. Which uh, which leads me on to another question that Nicholas has sent. Sorry, sorry, from... sorry. I just have to add to that question. Uh, CSS, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, the CSS selectors that are coming now. Uh, with those, you will be able to do that. So instead of uh, you know saving uh, as default, you would you know just create these global CSS selectors and just add the class. Uh, to whatever widget you like, and that can be, I mean, I mean, the best solution. It would only be for styles, though, wouldn't it? If it was a CSS selector, so yeah. you would lose the ability to populate with custom content, but still, equally, a, a very, a very useful feature for sure. Um, this it leads on to another question that um, Nicholas has sent through um, from Jason and he asked, and again, you did touch upon this in your demonstration a few minutes ago is what's the difference between save as global and save as default. And it is off, it is often confused. Um, but Jason, we did briefly touch on that shortly, uh, ago. So do, do go back and, and rewatch this video. Maybe, maybe I could show, I can show just one quick example of save as yeah, global. Yeah, sure. We've got plenty of time. So why not? Let me share your screen. So I'm going to go back to you know adding the image, and you saw this. We already saved this as a as a default, but uh, let's say you want uh, you know um, another way the, this widget you know image widget to look. Um, so you know maybe you want you know a wider, maybe with with a less radius, maybe even a different content. Uh, I don't have anything now here, but <laughs> let's say I had. So if I would to have this and then right click save as global, it's gonna ask me what is the widget name. So I'm basically creating a global widget that I can use anywhere on the website, you know, in templates, in pages, posts, wherever. So I can call it image style one, for example, because this is an image widget, but you can do this with any widget, okay? But you, it's, it's really, it's very useful and the, where you can find those, Again, it's not under your normal widgets. It's right here in the next tab called global, and you can uh, uh, just drag and drop them anywhere. However, you will see you will not be able really to edit them because this is you create it once and reuse it on the website. Uh, it's uh, useful a lot for you know, uh, let's say you created a form you know um, that you want to reuse on multiple pages. So this form, you know, if you create it as a global one. You can reuse it very easily without having to set every time the same the same values. Uh, but let's say you want to change it on this page. You want it like this, but you want a little bit of change. No problem. You just have to unlink it. So as soon as you unlink it, it is no longer glo longer global. Meaning now, if you change anything on it, it will change only on this one, but not on the global one. So this one is global. This one is not. And uh, and uh, yeah, unlink it, and then you can uh, um, you know modify it as as you wish. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, I would probably add that um, global widgets are more content related, and save as default more design for design. I don't know, guys, what do you think? I think that's a good observation yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I I would like to uh, maybe just. Uh, uh, share a hack that I have when, uh, you know, <laughs> designing websites. Uh, again, we recently also updated the uh, keyboard shortcuts. So if you, what you need to do when you're in your editor, you just press command or, or control a question mark and you will see this pop up. So what this is, is basically uh, all the uh, uh, latest uh, shortcut, keyboard shortcuts that you can use and this is such a boost for productivity. You know, instead of using a mouse and searching for a certain option, uh, with uh, remembering remembering these uh, shortcuts is of a great value for your productivity and speed when building websites. So what I did actually is I printed these out. 
So I printed these out and uh, I have them on paper and next to my monitor. So whenever I need to remind myself, uh, I just look at that paper. And then next time I don't need to look at it because I'll remember it. So, nice. You still have a printer? I don't think I've had one for years. <laughs> <laughs> they write it all down manually. Yeah, I think my sister had it and I printed it at her house. <laughs> She's an accountant, Amazing. so she put the, sticker. oh, well, that put the stickers it. on the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. that explains it. Yeah. OK, we've got time for one more question, unless obviously a really excellent one comes in. But the, I'm not sure about this one. Maybe you guys know. Uh, but Catherine has asked, why do containers sometimes have tabs at the top and other times not? And I believe this is probably in reference to the handles in the editor. I may be wrong. What do you guys think? <laughs> Stumped you? <laughs> yeah. uh, why do containers sometimes have tabs at the top and other times not? Oh, okay. Uh, containers have. Could this be related to maybe some of the UI updates? Oh yes, I think in? that's exactly it. Yeah. Mm. So do they hide? Do they hide if you're not maybe focused on that particular container? I, I haven't got an editor open in front of me right now, so I can't look to check. But can you, um, can you share my screen for a second? Yeah, uh, sure. I think if it's in reference to this, the new, uh, the new NAFT, uh, you know, uh, banner that we have here in the top, which is actually still a, um, Richard, your screen has just disappeared for some reason. Oh, sorry about that. That's cool. Just share again. I'm not sure it's in reference to the I, top I, I bar. Think, I, I think, think she was asking about containers specifically. Specifically containers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Maybe, I can, maybe, maybe if you could add show. a few containers and uh, we can yeah. see how that behaves. Okay. Edgar, uh, Igor, I'm now uh, sh sharing your oh, okay. <laughs> So, So you can see here uh, when you're focused on a certain container, it will only show its uh, um, borders, let's say. Okay. So you can see this container only pops up when I hover over it, as well as these inner containers here. Uh, they're, uh, let's say, um, border you know, uh, pops up as well as here, the icon, uh, when I hover over it. Why is this, why was this a design choice? Because uh, not to clutter too much, uh, the, you know, the page. So, you know, you can already have a lot of uh, widgets inside these. And uh, every time you now hover over uh, the containers, it will only then show the icon. So this one and this one. However, I would like to show one more thing uh, you know, people like to duplicate this. So to duplicate this, of course, you need to right click here and click duplicate or with the command D. So you're just selecting this and uh, command D, okay, for duplicate. Uh, but you can actually extend this. And this is actually a, not a new feature. This is a pretty old one. But if you go here on the top left in the new uh, um, top bar, uh, you can go to user preferences. And I believe it's uh, editing handles, right? here so you can enable this and you can see now another button which is a duplicate button here so if you use it a lot and you like to click here you can just use it this way so i, I like to use it sometimes it's pretty cool and um yeah that's maybe maybe Igor, that's right I, I i have a request Igor. could you add a could you add a container and then mm -hmm. add a container within that container yes here we go. So just so just get rid of what you so get rid of everything you got. We just want oh, okay, one okay, column, okay. just just one column. Right, um, right, right, right. Oh, okay. So, so nice and yes. simple. Let's so, add it like this. Yeah. Just a second. So I'm gonna Let's add a container and just one inside. So here we see the handle. So this identifies the parent container. And now exactly. if we add another container within that container. Right, if I just drag and drop it. There we go. And we don't see the um, the handle at the top. I believe this is what Catherine was referring oh. to. Um, okay. Although I feel like the other explanation was also beneficial. Um, I think this is why. So Nicholas has confirmed for us that it uh, it basically just better identifies the parent container. So it allows you it's to also, easily yeah. see which one is uh, is in charge, basically. Right. Right. Exactly, and if I if I go here and add uh, you know more containers inside, uh, only the one that's currently selected will show the border, as you can see. So I can go, and it's I think it's better uh, you know represented even here in the structure. So you can see if I select this container, only its 
border and an icon will show okay and then if i go to the parent one it will show only it's and uh, that's the same with you know hovering and, and clicking on this so um and uh, another thing that i mentioned before um i'm just gonna tell it again so if i go to this container and i want a lot of people have let's say problems maybe adding uh, widgets and elements into the particular container they want uh, mm -hmm. it can be a bit fiddly depending on you know the size of containers and the space between containers let's say so the best way i found out now uh, to to do this is to select uh, the container you want the element in and then just by clicking on it so no longer dragging and dropping uh, and making a mistake adding it to a wrong container just clicking on it and it will add it to the right to the right container okay and then you can then drag and drop it here in the structure as well if you like and by the way it's, it's gonna add it to the bottom so every time but you so you can move it up later i think if you're not using structure or what was called navigator um you're missing a trick for sure it's uh, it's incredibly helpful to to stay organized and you can rename all of those containers as well um to stay super organized Okay, well, that's actually all we have time for today. But thank you to everybody that came along to watch our AMA about Flexbox containers. And thank you, Igor and Richard, for sharing your expertise. I would like to thank Nicholas for taking care of a lot of comments that we had recently. Nicholas is, is a dream in the comments. What would we do without him? He, uh, <laughs> he really is a dream. You can find us all in the community. So if you have more questions about Flexbox containers, please feel free to reach out to any of us, and we will be happy to help. But for now, we'll say bye and we'll see you all next time. See you bye next now. month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.